Didn't know today would be our last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast Thank you. 
few words about Sanjeev. And he was actually an extrovert, like a complete extrovert. Um, in the elementary school, just to tell you a small story about Sanjeev, so you have an idea about what kind of spirit he had. At some point, I had to leave work, and then in the morning when I got off, I would drive to the school just to sit in the class because Sammy just wanted to chat with his friends. And uh, again, he was loved. He was loved. So I said, peace, happiness, and love is who he was. His uh, dream was to be in the Air Force. And uh, I thank the Lord. When I first got the news, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't stand it. I always thought about myself as a very strong man. But I could not breathe when I heard the news. After a while, I realized that the Lord was actually gracious because in the last two years of his life, uh, Sammy accomplished so much. He was able to work, enroll, and graduate from Air Force. That was his dream. Uh, and another of his passion was IT. And when Zolani was born, uh, we obviously did a baptism, family organized a baptism for his uh, little daughter. And you'll see one of the pictures. Sammy actually showed up in his Air Force uniform. That's how much he loved the Air Force. Obviously, I know Sammy loved me, but he loved his wife, Luna. Um, a family member once said, I love the way he loves her. And he loved her. All I'm going to say maybe he loves Olani a little bit more than you. That's probably maybe the only person. Um, so what Sammy said was, if I'm, if I'm awake and even if I'm sleeping, nobody's going to touch Olani. I'll take care of her. And that's what he did. You will see pictures where even while he's sleeping, Olani makes me. So the, the, the anecdote about I feel complete. So when we came to see Zolani, we asked him, how do you feel as a child who just had a child? And he said, Dad, I feel complete. I mean, I'm about to turn 50. I, I, I don't recall ever saying or feeling like I feel complete. So again, I thank the Lord because in the last two years of his life, he had a chance to really Leave his dreams, and you know, he had told me, Luna, you don't know this, and this is the first time that I'm saying this to anybody. But he had told me a long time ago, I'm gonna marry her. So it wasn't an accident, it wasn't like he knew. And when he told me that, I was like, How can you, like 16 year old, 17 year old, I'm gonna marry her? Like, where, where, where are you coming from? <laughs> so what my son taught me is be true, leave your life. And he did that. Even though, even sometimes we did not agree with his choices, we now see that he was 100% correct in all the decisions that he made. And sometimes I, told, I was like, Sammy, you remember we sat down one time, the three of us? And I said, the plan that you're sharing with me, I don't know, that's, that's a tough one. I mean, there's an easier plan, right? But Sandy said, Dad, trust. And again, in hindsight, I, I, I truly believe that he, he was blessed. Um, so I'm crying today. I'm totally despondent because I just wish the Lord had given him just more time. Just more time to experience more of that completeness. But I'm still working at being complete. So again, Sandy, thank you for that.
Um, it's, um, I mean, I can't, I can't think of anything that I would have given. I would have given everything in my life, whatever the case may be, for Sandy Club, for more than me. I don't want to open the microphone. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, just know that Sandy was a beautiful soul. It was a beautiful kid. No malice. And, you know, people always say nice things at funerals, but I truly mean it from the bottom of my heart, not because it was my son. Uh, he was an example. He was a role model even to myself. And there are some things that I've already started changing my own life just because of Sandy's passing. Because I thought I was teaching him, I was training him. But like Jesus said, if you cannot become like a child, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. I think sometimes we need to look at these kids and realize that they know better than we do as, as grown-ups or older people. So again, not trying to hold the microphone too, too long. Thank you so much for coming. And, um, and Sammy, you rest in peace. You know we love you. And uh, we're happy that you're able to achieve your dreams. And we, you know, trust in the Lord, you know, and in His decision. Thank you so much. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Carol. Um, you, you all knew Sammy, and I heard a lot of great things about him. But I'm here to testify to his humility. Sammy never took anything for granted. Every single time, because he was mostly living with his uh, mom, you see. Every single time, Sammy stepped foot in Oreo, or Rob, or whatever. Thank you for having me. Sammy would thank me for a glass of water, for a meal. And I kept saying, Sammy, you don't have to. What does that mean? Like, hello, Sammy's not your real brother. Haha, <laughs> you're right, Auntie Carol. But the next day, I will hear thank you for parking my car in a way that he could, you know, park his. Like, it's. That's the thing that I, um, hit me each and every time. You know, it's easy. As he's a teenager, especially when you hear, you know, all troubles they normally go through, and and you come in, blended family dynamic, you kind of mentally prepare yourself to hold. Um, I'm gonna need to be maybe a little patient here, but Sammy never ever gave me the opportunity to worry. Never a slight rigor, and that's ten years. So I think that should speak well. He wasn't in Spider's house, but still felt grateful for every single thing. And that always baffled me. Thank you again. Growing up, um, me and Sammy didn't always have the greatest relationship. However, I can say this. He always was there to push me to be my best. We had a rivalry for basically everything. Right? We would compete for our grades, you know, how how well we did at home. Oh, for example, one example I just think of right now is that we used to do karate when we were younger. And our mom would take us every week. And both of our goals were essentially just to beat up each other up constantly, right? Just trying to show who was stronger, you know. Little kids, that's what we did, right? As we grew older, Sammy grew into a person of his own. He was extremely introverted. As I mentioned that earlier, I was amazed at how open, how friendly, how just easy to talk to he was. Right, but I actually took notes because I'm the polar opposite. Right? The thing that really makes me sad right now is knowing that could have, what could have been. The moment at his peak, everything comes crashing down. It's just. However, I can say one thing. I truly believe Sammy did exactly what he wanted to do. As our dad mentioned earlier, he planned to marry Luna long ago. <laughs> I always found that is like 
I just found that hilarious. Like, is he actually like? <laughs> like, honestly, I was, I was happy for him truly. Like, I thought to myself, this will give him motivation, you know, give him a drive. And this is exactly what happened. I went to the airport, graduated, certification, and is now father. It's just amazing. The man he became. What he told me is that, from what he has done, is that if you have a goal, you really should just go head first into it. And I'll try to carry that with me now. Thanks, God. Thank you. Yes. Sammy was a very outgoing person. If there had been an election for class president when he was a sophomore, before COVID hit, he probably would have won it. But when COVID hit and we went into distant learning, he, he took a big dive. And the only thing that really kept him going was the growing love that he had for Luna. He did things that amazed me. One time when one of our cars was broke and we were busy using the other one, he walked from Echo Key to Waldorf to see the man. That, that's just how much love he had for her way back when. And he went from an A student to a C student because of the distance learning and and he just didn't know how to adapt to that, but he did graduate, and then he rebounded with Luna and with the Air Force. I also remember that Sammy always had a beaming smile when everything was good, and a deep frown when he felt bad. His smile could charm anyone, She was even trying to charm uh, some people's uh, pets that were misbehaving. I worked on that. Depending on the situation, this frown could either make you laugh or make, make you cry, depending on what was frowning about. His smile was the brightest when he felt loved, respected, and valued by the people around him. His smile was the best when he was caring for his baby girl. Now he is smiling around God's throne. I love you, Sammy.
saying he would be testing her while he was supposed to be in his virtual class in the science and tech office. He would be looking in my lunch bag to see what I had to eat, to see if he liked it, which most of the time he did not. And he talked about Luna every chance he got. I reached out to Luna on Facebook because even though we had never met, I felt that I knew all about her. He told me how much he loved her. And he told me that it was something about her that he just could not let go of and one day he was going to marry her. So when I saw a post on Facebook and I saw that her last name was Kiss, I sent him a text message and I said, is there something you want to tell me? He bombarded my phone with pictures of him and Luna and his daughter and he told me how happy he was. That was two days before I got the news that he had passed. As a teacher, a lot of times parents don't know how close their children get with an educator. Standing with my friend and out of my 18 years of teaching, he was a student that I would never forget. His smile, his jokes, his laugh and even his disobedience as I asked him to leave my room when he should have been in another class. Mom, I thank you for sharing Sammy with us at Alfredo High School. We love him and he will be with us. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I actually um, was Sammy's youth pastor here at Catholic Gospel Church. And I would have been a fool not to come up and pay my respects to Lucy and Mike because Sammy was a blessing indeed. I had the opportunity to meet Sammy in about 2013 and he was not in ministry at that particular time. But um, anybody who goes to Catholic Gospel Church knows that all of the kids at Calvary Gospel Church and Children's Church, they all wanted to be in youth ministry. So whenever Sammy would bring his little brother Jacques upstairs to take him to Royal Rangers, he would always stop by me and say, can I come yet? Can I come yet? And I would say, well, first of all, what is your name, young man? He said, Sammy. I said, does that stand for something, Sammy? No, just Sammy. I said, okay. I said, well, you got to be a certain age, not a certain height, because he said to me that he thought, oh, I'm tall so I can get in. I can pass, right, Ms. D? I said, no, you have to be a certain age. And so as soon as he was able to come to youth ministry, he participated. He came on several overnight trips. We had an opportunity to enjoy him, to learn about him. If I could describe him with one word, he was sunshine. And I thank God every day from the moment that I found out that he had transitioned, that I had an opportunity to cross paths with him. He was a blessing not only to me, but even to the ministry, to the other young people in the ministry. I send you condolences from my daughter in Texas. She is distraught. She said Sammy was a jokester. He was funny. He made her laugh and he was extremely kind. We love you. Anything that you need from us here at Calvary Gospel Church, we are always here. It was a blessing. And we will continue to pray for you and be for you as you travel through this journey. Amen. 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 I'm going to keep it real short. So I just want to thank you, Sam. You know everything we've been through, the verbal altercations, the physical altercations. You know, I go through it a million times. You know, even though you were a couple months younger than me, you taught me so much stuff. You know, I used to be a knucklehead, I'm not gonna lie. Anybody who knew me, you know, you helped me in so many ways to to grow up to mature. You motivated me in so many ways. You know, and I'm glad that we were able to have a conversation before you left this church. You know, me, him, and Theo sitting over there, you know, like six weeks ago, 
we're in this basement, chilling, talking, playing games. I would have never even thought for a second I'd be standing right here saying what I'm saying right now. I watched this man just go miles for anybody that he loved. You know, for his wife, for his daughter. I watched him with her back. You know, and it just hurts to be standing right here. But I had to pay my respects. And I love you. Hi everybody, my name is Katie Stewart, and I used to know Sammy um, from high school. Once he passed, he was in a spot in his life where all that hard work and that's, that's where he was. So for, for all of us who weren't able to share that joy with him at that moment in time, please send all your blessings to Zilvani because that's his legacy, and she's going to need us. For all those people who want to be there for Sandy, for all those people who, who love Sandy, please let's all come together and be there for her, because that is Sandy. And for Luna, nice to meet you, by the way. Let's all just come together and love on one another, because you don't know what can happen. You really don't, and he was so young. I remember all the times on the bus, me, Bruce, and Sandy, always hearing about Luna and how he wanted to marry her so bad, how he was going to be a good father, a great father, and let's all help him to continue that legacy of being a great father, please. Sorry, I'm tall. <laughs> Where do I start? For you guys who don't know me, I'm like a Sammy's older cousin, older brother. First time I met Sammy, I had recently come from Cameroon, um, my sister and I. And way back, I don't know, 2006, maybe seven. And I met him and Paul, so young. Um, <clears throat> so the next time that I had seen him after that, a few years after, you know, I think uh, I saw him alongside the concert. Um, those two were always amazing, you know. They lit up the room wherever they went. I could fight all the time, argue all the time. Uh, <clears throat> but as the years went on by, uh, those were the, the distance between us kept on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so I found myself a uh, senior year in college, finally coming to visit them. And Sammy was not only taller than me, but he had a bigger beard than I did. <laughs> Mom told me the morning at, I think it was maybe 5.30 a.m. They sent me had passed away. I froze, you know, I, uh, I couldn't believe it. <clears throat> and I'm coming here today, you know, when I realized that I've been in denial from that time on till today, because looking at his pictures, and seeing how many things he was able to accomplish, having a child, you know, graduating, uh, being in the cybersecurity team in the, in the Air Force. I say this to encourage you guys that family is important and the people that you love, you know, it's very important to keep them close. Any single 
It's the very time that you guys have to watch your day. Call the people you love. Tell them that you love them. Tell them that you love them. It doesn't matter how much I cry or pray. Just that that's like he's gone. Please don't go to bed. <laughs> I should have been there more in this life. I should have. Makes me pass myself by an example of my sitting. But <clears throat> it's like the previous speaker said, you know, what can we do now to honor? <laughs> we can all take our part. Me specifically, I need to be there more for his family, more for his uh, daughter. <clears throat> and just keep in touch more because that's how you show up. It's not enough to just be related to someone. You know, you have to kind of show that you're someone important in my life. Now that he's gone, he's going to truly be messed in. We now know what we need to do. You know it's honor. Hello everyone, my name is Veli, and I see an older cousin to Sammy. Um, I don't want to take up too much time today, but I do want to share a dream that I had the morning of Sammy's passing. Um, for those of you who are uh, having a relationship with the Lord, you know that the Lord speaks to us heavily through dreams. And so, earlier this May, when I graduated, I had the privilege of on TTC and Uncle Michael attending my graduation. In this dream, I was back in the scenario of my graduation, but um, CGC and Uncle Michael weren't there. Um, everyone else was there, was there. And in the dream, I was with my brother Ivan, but he seemed to not remember a lot of things. And in the dream, I knew something had happened. Um, and we were having a conversation, I was telling my brother Ivan in a dream, something happened, something's off. And when we came together in a circle, we were examining ourselves, I noticed that something was off in Ivan's face. And in that moment, immediately, I knew in a dream that something happened to who I even represented in a dream. I hugged him and I said, it is well, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are okay, it is well. I woke up from that dream and I was in a lot of distraught. I cried so much, I pled for mercy from the Lord. And when I went back to sleep at around 5 a.m. in the morning, my mom called me, telling me that Sammy had passed away. Mm. I understood that. Sammy is off to a better place. We know that each and every one of us, we're not going to live forever. But what's most important is where are we going to go? When we're, where are we going to spend eternity? We can at least rest assured that he's in a better place. We can at least rest assured that he's resting well. And I think that's the most important thing. That's what I'm trying to hold on to today moving forward. God bless you all. Everybody, uh, my name is Theo. Uh, I was one of you know Sammy's boys. Man, there's so much I can really say, bro. Like, the really, like I don't really associate myself with that many people, but I like to associate myself with Sandy because not only did he want to see me win, he also competed in winning, which pushed both of us to be better, kind of. And I really like that. Like, it, it helped me become a better person, a better man. And I, I really appreciate him for that. Like, even with small stuff, even with, you know, doing IT, um, even, especially playing with video games. Like, man, I remember, like, the, I think it was like a week and a half before he left, he texted me, he was like, bro, I need you, I need a favor. So I'm like, hey, what's up? He was like, uh, I need you to sign up for the Air Force. I'm like, bro, what? I want to sign up for the Air Force. Like, hey, shout out for the Air Force, I could, uh, I could stay home with this last week, blah, 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 blah. I was like, all right, I got you. So, 
Something happened where I was actually able to go and help him out so he could like spend the whole last week home, you know, with Luna, Solani, uh, Jack, and all of this family. And I'm so glad that, you know, Jesus, the universe, I'm so glad that the outside powers of mine that to happen. Like, I'm so happy. But I did not think that would allow me for all of this to happen. Like, I remember, I remember sitting in the basement after we was playing the game. I was thinking to myself, I was like, I wonder when is the next time I'm going to see, you know, Luna, Zalani, his little brother Jack, uh, Hunter. I was sitting there thinking, like, when am I going to see all these people again? I probably won't see him until, like, he come back. I know I've been seeing him recently for, like, multiple times a week. It, it hurts, but sad to go, bro. Oh, my God. So, it's all good. I do believe that he trusts us, though. He has faith in us. He has faith in us to take, to take care of it. You know, Luna, Salani, to be here for you know, his family. So I thank him for having that trust in me. You know, he's, always, he's always put out a helping hand whenever I've been at my lowest. And you know, I've always been able to help him out. He always told me tough things. And he, he really pushed me to be better. I, I truly appreciate that. And then, well, I think one of the things that like really, really gave me motivation, you know, regarding Sandy was like his his drive, his drive to be like regardless of what happened, he wanted to be better than me, and that made me want to be better than him, <laughs> and then that made like both of us just overachieving a lot of stuff. Like, like for people like I'm 19, you know, he turned 20. For both of us, at IT certification was huge, so we like, oh yeah. Okay, so who gonna make the most money with his IT stuff? Who gonna have the most certification about him? Who gonna have this third, this, that, and the third? So, yeah. And I also wanted to tell a funny story regarding Luna, too. So, I think it was my ninth grade year, my ninth grade or tenth grade year, I don't remember. All I know is that it was about 7 a.m., I'm in class or whatever. He sends me a Snapchat picture, and he's riding a bike. It's dark, it's, 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 it's real dark outside. He's riding the bike on the back road. I'm like, bro, where are you going? He's like, I'm riding the bike to go see Luna, she mad. I'm like, oh, bro, like, bro, you got school in like an hour, bro. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, bro, but I gotta go see Luna, bro. Blah, 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 blah. All right, bro, like, he dressed in sweat. I knew that he went to school stinking, bro. I just knew that. I just knew that. But that's really how much he's on Luna, though. And then, you know, he gave us a lot as a gift. So I, I do believe that he'll live through Zelani and we just gotta really assist her, Luna, his family, and just continue to show his life. But I really appreciate that, you know. He told me a lot, bro. And one of the last things he told me, the last thing that he texted me, I think it was like, I think the morning before, or like the afternoon before he passed, he said, I know this is right, but I love y'all. Those are me and a few other people. I wish, I really wish that I said I love you back, but instead I said, bro, leave me alone. <laughs> but he knew that I loved him though, bro. That was really my guy, so I just appreciate him for, you know, bringing that light into my life. He told me a lot. But, yeah. Also, it brought me a lot of beautiful moments too, especially with his little brother Jack. That's, that's really my guy now. That's really my guy. My name is Caleb. Some of y'all know me. Most of y'all know me. I really came up here just to tell y'all all the things that me and Sammy have spent through for years. I know this is fifth grade. The amount of times I sat here, looked at him, and been fascinated by the things that he's been doing is countless. And sometimes I didn't understand that. But it made sense at the end. It always worked out. And if you knew Sammy, you just want to do what you wanted to do. You just want to do what you wanted to do. But at the same time, he was always considerate and cared about other people's opinions and what they thought, and always made sure that was considered in his decision. And he always considered other people. And out of all the people that I met, I felt like he probably was one of the most considerate people in my life. I really don't care about a lot of things no more. I don't really care about a lot of people. I don't want really to talk to nobody. I don't be around nobody. 
Like, he was one of the only people that I was willing to talk to and reach out to. And most people don't know this. But I remember vividly the day that Sammy was in my driveway. And he's sitting here and talking to me like, Luna, he wanted to do with life. He said I could go to school. He showed me his acceptance. And he was like, but I don't think school's for me. I think I want to go to the military. I have a military family. I sat there and we had hours, hours of conversation about how we should go to the military and get his service. And it crushes my heart every single minute to know that he sat there and he did. He was happy. Wife called. And the last thing I got to say to him was happy birthday. And I love I wake up in the morning, and I got my phone and I see he's gone. He was, he always wanted to achieve his goals, and he did every time. And it just crushes my soul. Every time he did it for me. That's it. Hi. <clears throat> my name is Kennedy. I've known Sam for a long time, and I just, I wanted to share a funny story. Um, when we were in high school, and I mean, I had a tradition. I'm sorry, so his parents didn't come by. On the last day, before the last day of school, and all the last day, I went to break. So, and I used to get very drunk and stumble around the whole place. <laughs> um, and before winter break on our sophomore year, high school, we were both drunk as usual. And um, he was going on and on and on about Luna. <laughs> Like, why are you so obsessed with this girl? And he looked at me with a very serious face, which Sammy doesn't have. And he said, I want to spend the rest of my life with her. I forgot the biggest, toothiest grin I've ever seen on his face. And that says a lot. And I'm so happy he got to wish. These are beautiful expressions. I know many more would like to share, but. We actually have to conclude our service in 20 minutes. We have a very tight schedule with Shelton Ham. But this is what it's all about. You sharing your heart about Sammy. Each one spoke so well. So God bless you. Keep in mind, though, that after the interment, we have a gorgeous banquet hall. Everyone's going to be invited. And that's going to be an opportunity for conversation and more sharing. And so we're going to continue this celebration this afternoon. Then that's the same for us, and we'll be a few pictures.
and he was not a very popular preacher. And so the king of Syria wanted to trap him into this small town. And so Elisha woke up in the morning and his servant was with him and the servant saw all these horses and chariots and armies of Syria encircling the little city. And he was so afraid, what a friend. And the servant said, prophet, don't you see the enemy? We're outnumbered. We're out manipulated. We're in despair. And Elisha said, no. Those that are with us are more than those that are against us. And the servant said, I don't see that. And Elisha prayed and said, God, open his eyes that he might see. And all of a sudden, the Shen man, his eyes were open. And he was able to see in the mountains that were surrounding the city, chariots of fire, heavenly horses, the host, the armies of God. See, that's the invisible reality. When we get to heaven, we're going to be surprised as we look back and God shows us things, how active angels were. I really believe, according to the story of Lazarus and the rich man, I really believe that an angel escorts a child of God to heaven. And I believe on that very dark day when God called Sandy home, that the Lord sent an angel to the state of Washington and the angel knew just where he was and personally bore him up and carried him into the paradise of God. But even those that are left behind here, angels can strengthen us. An angel came into the wilderness to strengthen Jesus when he was hungry. In Gethsemane, when Jesus was fighting the powers of darkness, an angel came and strengthened him. There's a whole invisible world of God's resources and God's armies. And when we live by faith, we know that if God is for us, who can be against us? When we live by faith, we rejoice in the living presence of Jesus Christ. On the day of the ascension, 40 days after the resurrection, Jesus was on the mountain giving final benedictions and instructions. And the Bible says that a cloud lifted him up out of their sight. Out of their sight. He disappeared. Peter says that we have never seen Jesus. We, he did. But his readers never had. With our eyes, we've never seen the lovely Lord Jesus. But Peter says we love him. We believe in him. And as a result, we rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. We see it by faith. We know that as the glorified man, the God-man, he's gone to prepare a place for us. He's the prototype for all of those who believe in him and how they will be glorified in the eternal world. He's the pioneer, the forerunner. He's gone before us to make a way for us. And right now, he's the faithful and merciful high priest. The one who wept tears at the grave of Lazarus. He's still the same, isn't he? Yes, he's exalted, he's ascended, he's coronated, he's glorified. But he's the faithful and merciful high priest. He can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And we enjoy his presence. We access his support and his compassion. Because we know he ever lives to make intercession for his people. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Now I tell you, when we live by faith, one more thought, when we live by faith, we reach for that glorious, eternal home. You find all kind of descriptions of faith in Hebrews 11. Moses made decisions because he knew this world was passing away. This world was not his home. Whether it's 20 years, 70 years, 
I read an article just a few days ago that the new life expectancy now is 76. And that's down from 30 years ago. You would think with modern technology, our span of life would be lengthening, but it's not. It's not. Whether it's 20 years or 70 years, life is like a vapor. It's here, then it, it's gone. Moses knew this world isn't forever. And the Bible says that Moses, by faith, when he came to years, he refused to be called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. He esteemed the riches of Christ greater than the treasures of Egypt. He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. He endured as seeing him who is invisible. He had respect unto the recompense of reward. Here was a man living by faith. He had access to all the treasures and pleasures of Egypt. He was in quite a position, maybe the next pharaoh. But he had faith. He saw something more important than the glamour of this world. He saw the people of God. He saw the kingdom of God. He sent the call of God with his life. He was living above sea level. He knew there's a world to come. Now, in closing, I'm going to tell you something that just blesses me. Bless you for Luna here and this dear father. You spoke so well today. Lucy, Mike, and this, this family, these brothers, this whole family, the big family, beautiful family, good looking family, good genes in this family. But I'm going to tell you something. One day, yes, we live by faith. And it's hard sometimes to keep the faith because the things that we see are so negative and we can doubt it. We have a battle, don't we? One day, though, our faith will become sight. The message is saying, I can only imagine. Two months ago, I had a missionary in this pulpit, Paul Schinkel from the Ukraine, 75 years old, and he sang two months ago, I can only imagine. And then we got word just a few days ago that he passed away. He went to that place that is unimaginable. So Jesus told his disciples in the upper room, he said, in a little while, you're not going to see me. They were sad. He says, I know you're sad right now. Because very soon, you're not going to see me. But then Jesus said, but then in a little while, you're going to see me again. In a little while, you will see me. And Jesus said, right now you have sorrow like a woman in labor giving birth. But as soon as the child is born, the sorrow is replaced with a permanent joy. Jesus said, that's the way it's going to be for you guys. You're not going to see me for a while, but then you're going to see me. And you're going to have a permanent, wonderful joy. And you won't remember the sorrow. Right now, for a little while, you won't be able to see Sandy. And that's a sad thing. The viewing was so beautiful a few days ago. A handsome young man with his uniform. This church honors the military. We have so many families connected with the military in our church. What a beautiful young man. And now has this little baby. So precious. It's sad for a little while. A little while. Not long. A little while. We're not going to be able to see him. And there's sorrow. We have to live by faith. We're giving in to God. We're trusting our Lord. We're believing in the promises of God. But in a little while we'll see him again. We will. And when we do, all that sorrow will be swallowed up in an incredible joy. Faith will become sight. We're going to see Jesus face to face. 
Look at everybody, the one who died for us, loved us, the precious Jesus Christ. To behold his face, eyes, look at my eyes, looking into his. And John says, when we see him, we will be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Our faith will become sight. We have a song, and then we'll pray our meditation.
The congregation is dismissed to go to their cars.
he's the Savior. He went to the cross and paid the price for our sins. He's alive and alive forevermore. And we are baptized in his name. God, we commit this body into your hands right now. Lord, this body is going to be into the safekeeping of the Holy Spirit until resurrection morning. We believe there's going to be a rapture, the second coming of Christ. Our hope is in you, Lord. And Lord, continue to give comfort and support to this family and friends. In Jesus' name. Didn't know today would be our last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight it's not my place to question, only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels around the throne tonight Always made my troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me when I'd fall In a world where heroes come and go Well, God just took the only one I know so I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day when I see your face again But until then God must need another angel around the throne tonight your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Singing hallelujah
par l'infiniment grand, l'infiniment petit, et par le firmament, ton manteau étoilé, et par frère soleil, je veux crier, mon Dieu, tu es grand, tu es beau, Dieu vivant, Dieu très haut, tu es le Dieu d'amour. Mon Dieu, tu es grand, tu es beau, Dieu vivant, Dieu très haut, Dieu présent en toute création. Par l'eau des rivières, par le feu qui te dit, comme un buisson ardent, et par l'aile du vent, je veux crier, mon Dieu, tu es grand, tu es beau, Dieu vivant, Dieu très haut, tu es le Dieu d'amour, mon Dieu. Tu es grand, tu es beau, Dieu vivant, Dieu très haut, Dieu présent en toute création. Par le chant des oiseaux, par le chant de la vie, par l'homme que tu fis, juste moins grand que toi, et par tous ces enfants, je veux crier, mon Dieu, tu es grand, tu es beau, Dieu vivant, Dieu très haut, tu es le Dieu d'amour. Mon Dieu, tu es grand, tu es beau, Dieu vivant, Dieu très haut, Dieu présent en toute création. D'un élan d'espérance Par ce regard d'amour Qui relève et réchauffe Par le pain et le vin Je veux crier, mon Dieu Tu es grand, tu es beau Dieu vivant, Dieu très haut Tu es le Dieu d'amour mon Dieu, tu es grand, tu es beau, 